Well, Washington has been keeping a close eye on the short-lived insurrection. However, President Joe Biden said that the U.S. and NATO were not involved in a presser on Monday. He also said it was too early to assess how the events would impact the war in Ukraine. The situation began to develop as it did. I directed my national security team to monitor closely and report to me hour by hour. I instructed them to prepare for a range of scenarios. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we were all on the same page. We agree, they agreed with me that we had to make sure we gave Putin no excuse. Let me emphasize, we gave Putin no excuse to blame this on the West or to blame this on NATO. Well, helping us understand the wider global perspective of that attempted mutiny, I am now joined by Christine Berzina, Managing Director at the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Uh, Christina, we've heard from many countries that this is an internal affair in Russia. What's the strategy there? I think it's really important for this not to be seen, as President Biden uh, just said, as some kind of interference by the West in Russian affairs. Uh, it has been very interesting to watch how uh, Prigozhin has shaken the foundation of the Putin regime and shown the fact that it is potentially vulnerable. There needs to be a clear line between what happens in Moscow and what happens in Russia, on the one hand, a second hand is what is going on in Ukraine, and a third thing altogether uh, is the role of the West. And I think we're seeing a very clear categorization right now for those three categories. And what happens in Russia is for Russia. Of course, there are lots of there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, the implications for instability in Russian uh, in Russia, a change of regime, uh, now the potential relocation of Prigozhin to Belarus, all of this matters for the West. But we are the observers and analysts of that, including in the high strengths of government to make contingency plans in case something spills over towards us as opposed to agents of any kind of change in Russia. That is really not for any um, of, the, of the countries of NATO or the United States to be involved in, in any way. There hasn't been an allegation of that. Uh, but I think that the for fear of misunderstanding, uh, there is this very clear line that there is Russia um, that is for Russians uh, to, to handle Ukraine, which is you know, Ukrainian and Russian uh, war, and then NATO. Now, we've heard reports that NATO and U.S. intelligence knew about this attempted mutiny uh, a few days in advance. What kind of sentiments do you think they, they will be feeling following what happened with Prigozhin uh, as it stands? Again, there's a lot of observation and trying to understand what are the implications for the security of the NATO allies. All of this is happening in many ways, not terribly far from NATO borders themselves. And if we look forward, the NATO summit is going to play, take place in Vilnius, which is not far at all from the Belarusian border in Lithuania uh, in the second week of July. And so as we have a question of where is Prigozhin, where do his troops go, uh, what is the role of these countries in the non-NATO world, that it's, of course, important to watch this. And I would assume that the intelligence community is going to be thinking very carefully about what do, uh, what do the Wagner comm troops do next? Do they reconstitute in Belarus? What do they do from Belarus in what direction? Of course, the focus is anticipated to be Ukraine should they be active in any way. But again, there is a NATO-Russia border, there's a NATO-Belarus border, and therefore we need to be very vigilant um, about what happens on the other side. But that vigilance, again, uh, is, is from this observer status and understanding um, that uh, there might need to be, you know, there might need to be more care placed on the safety of the borders in particular as we go towards Lithuania when you have all leaders of the of the NATO countries not far from Belarus, not far from Russia. But those are preparations that NATO countries are able to make, will continue to make, and frankly is the reality of living along the eastern flank every day of the year. So I think it's buckling down and saying we're going to be safe at home, but we need to watch what's going on over there. And now we've heard about the, uh, the potential uh, adversaries to Russia, but what about the allies in all of this? What will China, uh, what will Iran be thinking? I don't think that China or Iran like surprises. 
Uh, and so I think that a asset from the from Beijing's perspective for having Russia as a partner is in many ways the predictability of the Russian regime, or at least that is the um, you know that that could be perceived as one of the strengths of a strongman autocratic system like the one that Russia has. You have a guy, you know the guy, you can figure out what happens. They won't surprise you. Now, the lack of a uh, the success of the special operation, as Putin calls it, the invasion of Ukraine uh, last year, and the quagmire it has become was one unhappy surprise. Now, there's the assumption that Putin regimes uh, Putin's regime is incredibly strong and stable. Having this uh, Prigozhin shakeup is probably an incredibly unwelcome surprise to Beijing because if there's one thing they thought they could count on, it's the fact that Putin's going to be there until he chooses not to be there, or you know, old age tells him he can't be there anymore. Uh, so this again is an unwelcome surprise, uh, and I think that could make the partners in China less enthusiastic about this friendship they have struck up, and that bears a lot of risk for them in terms of sanctions or their relationship with uh, Europe, with the United States, and partners around the world. And finally, a last question on Wagner. Uh, a lot of what Putin said today almost pointed towards dismantling, saying that they could either go to Belarus or they could join the army. Uh, what would a dismantling mean on the international stage for Wagner? This is a very good question. Wagner, right now, we're looking at them in Russia, in Ukraine, but that's not been their traditional footprint. Uh, from the Central African Republic to the role in Syria, they have an incredibly global footprint and have been accused of significant atrocities around the world, especially in Africa and Syria. To have them no longer active in these countries um, would potentially change the uh, security dynamics, the stability um, of these ongoing conflicts uh, around the world. And that is something, of course, to keep an eye on. Um, it's not clear also what would happen and would you know, the, the decapitation of Wagner mean the decapitation of the entire operation, because then does it like a starfish uh, does each leg go and regenerate something? That we really cannot say exactly what will happen next, and that I think has been the very nature of the past few uh, of the past few days since Friday, when everything seemed to become unpredictable in Russia and uh, with the relationship to Prigozhin and Wagner. Christine Bezina, thank you so much uh, for joining us from Washington. That's Christine Bezina, the Managing Director at the German uh, Marshall Fund of the United States.